Welcome everybody. Another episode of Did You Hear Me? Sleazy here with Pac-Man. Also known as Benedict Barry. Uh, I don't man. know. Don't he know looks sharp that. though. Not God, he looks that. so good. And a, Straight from the church. And a very disgruntled sheriff on this episode of yeah. Did You Hear Me? A lot of sign going on down here. Yeah. Um, we'll probably get into that a little bit later. The sheriff is has a bone to pick, you might say, with, with us. Uh, is that why you have, what do you have on the shades? Is that to, to hide the yeah, red the, eyes? The stain. Yeah, what, what about these shades? What's going on with them? Drowning my sorrows all day. Didn't want any of our listeners to be seeing the bloodshot eyes of rage. Rage. Well, uh, Get it off your chest, Sarah. Come on, man. <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta bow down to the host. No, I man, I think you need to get, you know what, how about we get a nice <laughs> pour of a drink first yeah, and then yeah, we'll discuss this. Come on, keep it going. But before I do that, do you want to discuss these shades you have on? Oh yeah, we, uh, we're we shouting out our eight-year-old twin son who bought these for me. Bought them for you? At the Whit Davis Christmas store. Did you open them up? You opened your gift up I already? I was instructed by him. It was he a couldn't wait, huh? typical Clark County shout out. It was a wrapping in a brown bag. Yep, okay. my, my brown bags are underneath the oh, Christmas tree, well, waiting for Christmas morning. I was harassed, mm. Benedict Barry, mm. to open my <laughs> brown <laughs> bag immediately, and so I did. Okay. And well, here they were. Well, they look very nice. They do look uh, very nice. The eldest yeah. tornado did a good job looking out for his pops. The eldest tornado medium got me a brown oh, shirt, long sleeve shirt. Sorry, Sorry you didn't say twin. Sorry, it was the medium. Yeah, I was trying I to give keep credit his, to people who didn't deserve it. Got to keep his code name. Yeah, the eldest Turner has had a terrible weekend, but yeah, he got me a long sleeve brown shirt, which I don't normally wear long sleeves, but I will wear that one. Proud Papa. When I'm so, hanging out with my new friends, I'll be wearing that brown <laughs> shirt. <laughs> when you find a new podcast yeah. to be on. All right, let's get this drink first, then we'll talk about it. That's it. So uh, today, tonight, uh, or morning, whenever you're listening, whatever, to this, whatever. the drink of the week. Uh, kind of to the disdain of the sheriff is a they're doubling they're tripling down at this point uh purchased this in south carolina across the border this weekend scoff i'm a scoffing over palmetto here. moonshine <coughs> like excuse me <clears throat> um pack you ever had moonshine before um you know i think maybe in uh Tennessee, I went to one of the, what's that? Uh, one of those, the Sugar Lands or one of those tastings. Yeah, one of those tastings. Yeah. Um, Hanging well, out with the old whites. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a, yes. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a I've fan. I'm a fan of Sugar Lands. Basically, the moonshine is just whiskey that hasn't been sat in a barrel for a while. So um, it's a little different. I, I tend to enjoy it more oh. than whiskey for whatever reason. I guess my palate. So uh, we'll go ahead and shout out to pop the it out. We'll have a nice little tonight, but it's in a mason jar. So let's see if we can pop it. Yeah, get the shout out to the special agent class here. Ooh, we got something. That was, that was plastic. <laughs> my uh, tongue is watering here. We, do we need to check with a mile high man or Scott Bobby on our, uh, so, our uh, assessment? I'm gonna let. I'm gonna pour these in the Atlanta oh, Braves shot man. glasses that were acquired at the Pac-Man Christmas party a week God, ago. Lord, another gift I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. it's been a rough night for Pat. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised I got an invite, to be honest with you. So what well, you got, <laughs> I thought you were camping that weekend, so that's the only reason that's it. you got Yeah, it. invited me because you were in Tennessee. <laughs> wink, wink, we don't like you anyway. So uh, uh, we got it poured. I've got, I like to mix mine with something sweet. Absolutely. But uh, I also want to uh, sample this a raw, as they may say. <laughs> Are you gonna sip it like the mile high man? Just a little bit, then I'll pour it in okay, here. I'm gonna get some gators on top to of Benedict it. Benedict Barry and Benedict Cheers. Sleaze. Cheers. Yep. Just a All little right, sip. Just, All right, my old friends. <sighs> mm. <A> little burn. <coughs> <laughs> Where'd he go, Pac? Yeah, this is Pac's favorite episode already. I can tell. Champ. Oh. Yep. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> his khakis, are, tonight, the pockets on his khakis are coughing already. Tonight, uh, that's it. I'm doing it with a crisp and cool frost Gatorade. I got a little uh, shout out to my second job. 
Yeah, Thank I'll you. Try it with the Gatorade. Thank as well. you, Al Capitan and Scott Bobby, for the second job. But we got a little that cornucopia of Sprite here. I'm gonna try. All right. No Gatorade Frost. I'm for gonna you. try it. Okay. I'm gonna do it all, buddy. I'm gonna try hey, it with this first. Don't threaten the sheriff with a sugar drink, because he will he will uh, jump over any obstacle to get to that. I gotta say sugar that sugar drink. We have a. Don't get dehydrated. Saved you a little bit. The yeah, staple so. Arnold Palmer is on the table again tonight. Uh, don't know if he has a place, but he's here. Yeah, R.I.P. Uh, yeah, it's not bad with the Gatorade. Yeah, it's you mix much, it in there. Much better. I gotta enjoy it while I can. I'm going dry, going dry for a while. Okay, yeah, not we yet. Uh, not quite yet. Pack and I are doing a dry January in preparation for the <laughs> marathon. Why are you laughing about? What? what? <laughs> uh, just a Jamie Foxx music video just cracked into my head. Blame it on the uh, 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 alcohol. <laughs> I, I saw a uh, song was on the playlist at the Christmas party. Uh -huh. I don't remember it playing, but I was sober when I made the playlist. So. Play well, yeah, the playlist was sharp. Uh, well, not that we're friends anymore, but it was sharp. <laughs> yeah, so we, um, in preparation, <laughs> training, trying to get serious about this marathon, we have decided to do a dry January. Okay. That's right. So I, the, uh, uh, the drinks of the week may be a little... I guess I'll uh, just have to drink them all. That's fine. You can do whatever you need <laughs> yeah. to, but uh, maybe we'll bring the mixers for you. Yeah, that's it. Well, I got the mixers, too. That you do. Y'all just have to show up with your presents in your own uh, boom boom room. Yeah. Well, I almost, well, I almost let everybody behind the curtain. I want to do that. <laughs> okay. Because this is just a studio. It is. Yes, it is just a recording studio that I happen to live at. For oh, tax there, there it is. For tax purposes, <laughs> that's what it is. Um, but no, we're gonna we're gonna do that in preparation for the marathon uh, starting here the new year. Are you ready for that, Pat? Yeah, I mean, I'm ready. I'm actually gonna start my dry January on Christmas Day. Actually, okay. so you're gonna go through your birthday. Oh man, oh. it's it's yeah. If I can get through the gauntlet of the oh. first week, oh. Uh, oh move, Cotton, which is uh, Christmas, uh, the 27th is my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> what are you making? <laughs> and uh, and New Year's Eve, there. I can I can get through those. I think I can finish the rest of January off pretty easy. So, I'm not going all the way through January though. I will drink uh, the day of our mar after the marathon. Y'all celebratory, oh, yeah. celebratory. So you're going a straight month, straight month. Driving yeah, okay. out on the whispering eye too to keep them legs strong. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I, I don't think it's going to be that much of a challenge except in social. Okay. Situations I'm, such as the podcast, I or can, I can see that my questions are falling on deaf ears. I, we heard it. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> you gotta no, it's like not boxing. Be, no, you no. gotta keep the legs fresh. No to your question. No. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out to the special agent and Doc Lolliday <laughs> from the sheriff. Uh, He's in raw form uh, tonight. Uh, rare and uh, raw. Rare and a lot of an old friend. So a lot of the disdain comes from the drink of the week that was picked up in South Carolina. So the sheriff goes to South Carolina four times a week, apparently. Every time we ask him what he's yep. doing, uh, they are either coming from or en route to okay. South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. big family people. That's where their family lives. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, the we people, just give him a hard time about it. The people at this table are my family as well, but they, they, that memo never got delivered by so, the Postal Service. Anyways, we had an innocent... No, 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 <laughs> no. That was kind of planned hastily recently. And uh, to Greenville. Which yeah, to Greenville, South Carolina. Carolina. We had a great is, time, but the sheriff. A hasty plan is the sheriff's favorite plan. Yeah, but the Scott sheriff. Bobby knows it. Allegedly was on the porcelain throne scrolling and saw a picture that uh, gave evidence to that we were in Greenville and uh, the fireworks went off. I received a. Pat, I packed it too. Yeah, uh, he, I still have not got a response from Benedict Barry. But maybe he wanted to square off with me on a duel right now. Face to face. That's it. Mano e mano. Drop the gloves. Well, we'll go ahead and handle this on the podcast for everybody can hear our argument together. Would you have been available anyway? Yes. Uh, that's not true. That's <laughs> not true. You were busy. I am always available no. for the fishbowl. <laughs> I live in the fishbowl. You literally were going to your father's. Christmas celebration. Shout out. That's who got uh, Miss Tammy and Dad. Thank you for the free. There's a my free is a gift. The, uh, it's a well free to me. Yeah, a gift. I think Dad did say Dad's a little squeaky. 
like our host in CNN, and he did say they were four for three oh, at the Walgreens. That. Can't beat that. But yeah, free Arnold Palmer. Okay. So you, you trying, had a... I'm trying to get back in a better mood. I'm trying to explain our situation. So you already had a family engagement scheduled, <clears throat> but you're saying that didn't matter. You would have came to the friend function. Instead of I your family function. At a, at, I don't know about instead of. But, see, <laughs> but again, this was a hastily planned by all, right? Mm -hmm. At 23.32 hours, somebody's phone was ringing. As I was coming back through the yeah. land of I woke Barry up, and Sleeves. I woke up, rolled over, and hit the ignore because I was yeah, I know you did. <laughs> at the time. Big, big brain. She won that wager that you were not going to answer. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, already snoozing because, you know, at our age. Because he had, he had old guy Sean with him That's who it. goes to bed at 4.45 in the afternoon. No, we had a great kid. afternoon with the kids. Uh, I saw it. I saw it. And uh, <laughs> I saw it. Yeehaw, you know, brewing, shout out. By the time we got out. done eating dinner and coming back, it was time to go to bed. Uh, we logged some miles. The deputies were just getting heated days. up. Anyways, not to get... No, I'm. We, well, let's let's go. Let's. I don't even know if there's an apology needed, but if there's an apology needed, no, there's I, no we apology apologize needed. to the tornado family and to the sheriff publicly to all our dozens and dozens of listeners. We got like a hundred and forty-two followers, man. we we have a great group of listeners, and uh, you know, I want to make sure ESPN everybody anywhere. realizes this is probably unless something crazy happens from our last episode of 2023. Ah, uh, well, you could might have just stopped it right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we're going to end 13. 13 episodes. 13. Lucky number 13. Yep. You know, uh, hotels don't even have a floor 13. But they don't. And we're pausing on a 13th mm. episode. Hopefully that's not a bad opening. Nah, don't such believe in it. True friends. <laughs> well, <laughs> there was you, no apology needed. It was just a reminder that spontaneity is what the... Uh, Turner family does. Yeah, kind of like the times of the podcast. Just kind of whenever you're available, we pop in here and do it real quick. Because if we don't uh, pounce that opportunity, you will pounce. find something else to do. Pounce. Pause. <laughs> no, they, uh, the, <laughs> how, let the listeners know how close of a proximity, as the deputies were going down Mills Avenue, which is also an interstate, a toll road, 185, I was how far from the well, fishbowl? So, <laughs> how? So, Doc Lolliday booked this Airbnb. How in the world is she supposed to know where your dad lives? Sleazy knows it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was I was his international tour guide. Well, I guess I would have been a domestic tour guide for his first several trips to Greenville. And Scott Bobby has also been on the sheriff's domestic tour. So. I thought that was common knowledge. Well, now, would we, have, would we have jumped in a sleep sack with any of the packets or the sleeves? <laughs> no, but we, we also have other lodging in South Carolina because, as was mentioned, we go there so just to keep right, times right, right. a day. We just really. let our listeners know that the sheriff used to patrol the streets of Greenville. Well, not specifically, but that was in his area. No, I, his you are area. absolutely correct. Yes. I had statewide jurisdiction. But that we were assigned to that area. Hint, hint. But I got paid to stop people in post C, which is G Vegas, as some might say. Some do call it that. We would have, mm. we would have made an amendment. Now, granted, it would have been midnight before <laughs> the Turners really yep. started spicing that party up. But we were in very close proximity. Well, we're there on our minds and hearts. So, and now we're here. I just hope next time y'all go to Greenville because even though I work there, I do love Greenville. That Very nice city. That was my first time. That was pretty cool. Man, I could have been a part of... Could have popped my cherry. Yeah, cherries were in the air, <laughs> but no sheriff. But no, but it's Did right. you explain to the listeners that <clears throat> y'all's uh, address or your temporary address was 13 miles from... Dad's beautiful residence. I did not, but you made sure I was aware that you were 13 miles away at your family celebration. Shout out to episode number 13. Yeah, 13. That's a full, that's a full circle moment. Yeah. So, kind of in. Uh, I hope when any of our listeners breach the gap to the pothole capital of the world, 
where maybe the whole state has a full set of teeth that they think of the sheriff. You are quite the South Carolina ambassador. And y'all weren't thinking of the sheriff. We, we had thoughts about the sheriff. Oh, <laughs> pause. No, pause. Pause. But uh, I am not mad at Doc Lolliday, who I didn't even know planned this thing. Don't be mad at me, Doc Lolliday. Well, you really stepped off into it, but, so I hope you're able to recover. Yeah, I did. I just, just want you all to be thinking about me. That's we all always... no apology needed. Well, there, you may not, uh, or maybe you do know this. Maybe you are the conspiracy. So, uh, Doc Lolliday got a little sick while we were out on our adventure Saturday, had to go back to the Airbnb oh, alone. Oh. Just so happens around the time the sheriff was saying he's 13 miles away. Well, so, uh, yeah, oh. the plot does thicken, doesn't it? So, I am wearing the shirt that you inspired with your quivering of all knees. <laughs> the hands, the hands the are not hand, handy. Yeah, so I, I you know, but I, I had to ask her, The didn't. wives, I, Big Brain informed me that the families and the wives are off limits in all areas. So, I, so you had to have the conversation with you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make some uh, low blow jokes. All right. And I, I've learned in my elder age, as my stomach gets larger and larger, to run it by an unbiased source before I make any low blows. Okay. Shout out to JC. Yep. And Big Brain wasn't there for that low blow. So she, I said, mm. this is the low blow, okay. she said. Two low. Families are off limits. Correct. So I was not at Maybury Street or wherever. Mulberry. 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 See, see, I don't even know. Yeah, nice try. Don't check the Google. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's pull up that. Uh, well, just put an thinks. end cap on this argument that we've had. It's very a conspiracy very nice city theory. If you have yeah. been go, it's a great walking city. A lot yeah. to do there. Sounds very like nice. I went to Gather Greenville. We did go to Gather. Very uh, cool. Oh, we got a special guest walking oh. in. Perfect timing because we needed to segue yes. off of this. Uh, Real quick. Cut the tension. Tism that uh. the Sheriff has been <laughs> off on. So uh, special agents walking into the studio right now. The boom boom room. Big yeah. Brain also said we got to quit saying tism because we need to be Cancel. nicer. Is it offensive? You can put it on your yeah. phone. But that doesn't, but, uh, tism is so uh, broad. We don't know which tism yeah, we're talking we're about. We want to shout out Theo Vaughn for the tism. Because yeah. that's where I come up with it. I don't know where Sleeve's got it. So we brought Might have got it in Greenville. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> It'd be contagious. Uh, special agent is joining us for a brief period here. Uh, so we have been given the uh, layout, is that what we want to say, the, the, the race route for the marathon that Pac-Man, myself, Mama Sleazy, and Handsome Dave are doing a relay in the marathon yeah, January that's right. 28th. That's right. It's a, yeah, so I, I think we've talked about it before, but for anybody that hasn't listened, shame on you, go back and listen, but we're running the marathon as a four person team we're running it as a relay and they uh we just kind of figured out where the relay exchange points are so i think we need to figure out who's running what relay yep. who's starting us off and, and and as gentlemen we offered mama sleazy the first pick and uh she said it was too much pressure to pick so she just wants to be thrown in the hat that, that we're literally about to Ooh. do here so the hat's behind you there, oh, special agent. i have my it it's oh, literally gotta, behind. Gotta take the headphones off. Uh, I have my Rip from Yellowstone, black there hat. There we go. There we go. Shout out Rip. Taking him to the train station, as the sheriff would say. Shout out Rip. Um, so, uh, not so we've got to be taking me there. <laughs> yeah, blast for me for a trip. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, <laughs> so we've got the I'm four not moving on. <laughs> so we've got the four names in there and. As we are all about integrity on this show, we have a. Uh, yeah. I made the names, folded them up. The special agent has not seen the hat or the names until this moment. Is that correct? That's correct. I just want to make sure we're all above board, integral. She's hello, listeners. She's the Kirk Herb Street of this marathon. Yeah. So what are we? We're pulling them. Off. <laughs> we're pulling them off uh, in order. Of in order. So okay. first name drawn will this be first. the first leg. Uh, okay. And so on and so forth. So, Ooh, so can you handle it, Benedict Barry? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. All right, first name. I like the new shameful nickname. Uh, first name. First name. Who do we got? Who do we got? Pac Man. Pac Man. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, 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 no
Let the yeah. extra tendons clear the oh, way. I did, not walk. I did not walk first. <laughs> you got it. Oh, first leg. My apologies. Man. A lot of pressure because you set off the whole uh, no, I set, I set the standard for the whole entire race. If you start running a sit down for 30 minutes, then we're 30 <laughs> minutes behind already. Yep. Yep. No, he's got the, he's got extra oh, tendons. He's ready. ready. Oh, man. All right. Uh, second All right, leg. Second leg. The earth leg my, has who, been chosen. Who am I handing it off to? Gotta be Mama Son. Nope, not Mama Son. She'll be on the sideline. Mama Sleeves. Mama Sleeves. Mama Sleeves. Number two. Number two. Number two. Right. Maybe I already knew. Hey, is this a frozen <laughs> piece of paper? A la Patrick yep. Ewing from the Knicks in the 80s? Yeah. A la uh, Piedmont Reproductive and the, and the Chronology. <laughs> Did you cut up the oh. omelette we had in the middle down there? Is that yep. what these are? Don't need it anymore. It's already been mailed. Okay. Yep, that IRS envelope didn't need it. <laughs> There's a Christmas right. card from a friend. <laughs> Not the card, the envelope. Here we go. Number three is... Hands on yeah. the oh, so nice. crossing the finish line. No, we, gotta, uh, we don't know. This could be Alabama in the four spot here. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out yeah. excuse. I got kicked off the team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have a fifth name coming yeah. in. Number four, yeah. Nick Saban. Greg Turner. Oh. Oh. Yeah. If it's oh. the last hundred and feet. And sleazy. Go sleazy. Get up, man. You get to cross mm. the finish line. That's pretty cool. There's another name for that pack. Well, so uh, we have Pac-Man, Mama Sleazy, Handsome Dave, and then myself, as the final leg. As the caboose. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's good. I'm glad we got that figured out. We got uh, six weeks to think about it every day. Yep. Um, <laughs> we appreciate you coming up here and being our Vanna White, so to speak. Although you could have wore, I don't know, another layer of clothes. How many layers of clothes do you have on right now? Uh, we got a... Three. No suggestiveness yeah. out of the special agent. <laughs> well, all I'm saying is we are indoors and she is dressed for, I don't know, Alaska. <laughs> this little breeze got up the, here in the boom boom room. Not downstairs where she came from. Right. She got the best memo though. Shout out. Shout out. Yep. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Anything you need to add to the show before you leave? Nope. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. There you go. Ooh, all right. You. I've been the Grinch over here. All right. Appreciate it. You can take the rip hat yep. out of here. Yo, enjoy the whiskey. It's moonshine, thank you. Moonshine. Which is the bad. same. It is the same. So, uh, God, glad we got that figured out. Families are off okay. limits, Lee. <laughs> Families are off limits. <laughs> so, uh, since this is our last episode of 2023, kind of wanted to do a brief recap, not a recap, but just kind of uh, talk about the show, where we've been, where we're going. Uh, where the sheriff's going to find a new podcast to be a part of with South Carolinians. This is it. Uh, no, we've uh, we've come a long way from terrible audio to tolerable audio. Um, background noise. Yep. We are the the show, uh, Athens' favorite background podcast. That might be. That might have some. I think you just found your Yeah, that's uh, staying power there. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we've had a good time doing it. It's been a, been a lot of fun. Um Obviously, we've been football heavy to the chagrin of some of the listeners, um, especially the past several weeks, which a lot of people do enjoy. We treat this podcast as a conversation that we would have anyways, and so this is just what we talk about. But obviously, football will be transitioning as we come back to the new year. Uh, there will be some playoffs being played and then some NFL playoffs being played, but um, that probably won't be the main focus going forward. Uh, so we got a lot of things um, cooking, so to speak. A lot of things uh, mm. marinating mm. Yeah, for those see. meat cooker people. Yeah. Oh man, pause. <laughs> <laughs> Barefoot in the kitchen. No, we have That's a lot of I ideas. Like. Uh, we are going to have a lot more uh, listener guests on uh, going forward in the new year. We kind of uh, slacked off on that, not purposely, just kind of the way things work out. Um, and then the reason we're not having any more episodes this year is just because holidays coming up and we don't want to force anything and just try to do something because our work product's already bad enough. And if we come in here and don't disagree and don't even uh, and try to force it, then it probably would be even more enlistable too. So but now uh, we're going to be left clamoring for a couple yes. of weeks. I don't, mm. I don't know if they're going to be able to handle two week layoff, right. but you got to. The knees and the legs will be but, fresh. Uh, I think that's a good time for me to say. If you need something else to listen to, if you listen to our podcast, obviously, do check out the Roman and Dave podcast. He's got a couple of episodes up now. Just a different take, a guy from up north who has uh, more of a focus on NFL. 
So uh, listen to his latest episode today with his lovely wife, the Steph Monster. So anyway, let me put that plug out there because he does plug us as well. So I appreciate that. Wow, man, you got it. Whoa, man, pause. <laughs> A lot of plugs. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of plugs going on here. Man, you are you're in the holiday spirit over there. You are definitely not going dry on anything other than alcohol. <laughs> well, I, don't know. I don't even know where to go hey. with that comment. But, uh, uh, you know where to go. <laughs> but uh, I do want to talk briefly. Right up to the boom boom As room. I just said, we'll be transitioning. <laughs> yes. I, do want to, I do want to talk briefly about the, because uh, we won't talk before the, bowl game with the dogs and the Knowles. So I do want to briefly talk about that because it is of interest to us. Yep. Yeah, we, uh, we had to get to it last week with we, CNN. You know, shout out to CNN. He did a great job last week. Uh, don't want to make his head any bigger than it is. Um, yeah, but he had a lot of he had a lot of compliments. Uh, he did very well in the episode last week. He a did lot a of people fabulous enjoyed job. it. Those that are sports fans did enjoy his take on everything, but we didn't even get to the game. Uh, my biggest question is not necessarily who's going to win. Is uh, who's <laughs> is either, is either team invested in this game? Who's no. going to play? Who's, who's the gonna better? Play? Not, not anybody with any future at stake. So the last one. last update I saw is just one receiver for Florida State is out so far. Two of them. Okay, so a second one now. That's a shout out CNN. Their two biggest receivers. Okay. Uh, I haven't seen anybody for Georgia that's sitting out. Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson are the two. Uh, stud wide receivers that will not be playing for free shoes so it's an interesting thing because usually in these games you have a team who is left out and then a team who is glad to be there in this game you have both teams that are left out of the big dance the playoffs and they're playing each other i don't really know which way to go in this game as far as the betting lines winning losing i don't know which way to go we're gonna get the stat in, guy going here in any respect to this game because neither one of them are motivated i think Florida State's so deflated, as we covered in depth last week. They are deflated. Shout out to Big Brain. They are deflated. Oh. <laughs> we're not bringing that up on the podcast. Hey, we're, we're, we're not. We're not. But I'm you not. Been, if, he, if he wants to sleep outside, no, he can we're work just, we're, I'm sleeping right where I normally do. <laughs> okay. On the couch. All right. <laughs> but back to my point. Neither one of them. If you need to know about Deflate Gate with Big Brain, just holler at your boy. All right. You got the line pulled up yet? I sure do. What's the line on the game? The line on the game was 14. Let's check what the stat got. Yeah, we don't yeah, we don't I, even want to say that aloud. We're here to give out the information to I the people. I got to scroll down. I'm on the 29th. Here we are. Still at minus 14 okay. for Harry Dog and So basically, Colts. Vegas is saying that George is going to come in and roll in this game. That's what the line says. Is there an over-under? Shout out to the high maintenance handler who says I make that noise. I'm bang, I'm putting the buzzer on Georgia rolling. I didn't say that's what's gonna happen. I said that's what Vegas is saying. Under. I'm sorry, Pac. Forty four and a hook. So uh what So basically they're saying a, Florida State's not gonna score. A medium <laughs> scoring game. Well I think they're saying Florida State's not gonna be able to put up points and Georgia's gonna put up a decent amount of points and so that's what that's what I'm reading. I'm reading the lines on what Vegas is telling reading me. Reading the lines. Now, is that actually what's going to happen? That's my question. It is. 31-14, maybe? Is that what they're thinking? That would be right there at it, if my math is correct. So the contrarian, our favorite bird, would say mm -hmm. that Florida State's so mad about being left out that they have something to prove, a la uh, University of that. Central Florida several years ago. The, the true national champs. Allegedly, according to them. But they... They were an undefeated team that got no love from could, anybody voting. Uh, could be history repeating itself. Could be Bama turd with a one-loss natty and then an undefeated team. Hold on to your butt cheeks. But I think the difference in that is Central Florida never had a shot to get in the playoff, and so they had a chip on their shoulder. Florida State, by all accounts, should have. They, they, yeah. There was no way in their mind they were not in there, and this is devastation. So are they motivated? Yeah. I don't know. I'll give you the tip of the cap because you're right. The UCF at that time was a group of five anyway. Correct. So I don't know. It's just interesting to think about, um, you know, Georgia, two national championships. Most people on that team have been present for those two national championships. So this is kind of like a consolation game. I don't know how 100%. motivated they're going to be. Uh, bet betting on bowl games is always uh, not the... <laughs> 
not that we're any good in the regular season, but uh, <laughs> betting on bowl games is always a dicey thing mm. because uh, it's the end of the year. People have other things, NFL on the mind, graduation, moving on, transferring, all that stuff on the mind. It's not necessarily a locked-in game as in the regular season. That's my only point in that. Anything to add? Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, I can I see the wheel spinning, steam coming out of your ear. No, I don't, know. I don't think it matters. I think they're that much of a superior team either way. Mm. So, mm. Georgia's a I mean, superior team. So you hit. Yes. So yes. you heard it here. Take the Knowles. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty Plus much. 14. With our track record, take yeah. the Knowles. Yeah, but money, no. money line is, uh, Pack might be on to something with a little sleight of hand trick there. Because yeah. if you put uh, 100 down on free shoes, you can win. 450. There you go. So I do want to um, move on from that topic. I just want to cover that briefly since we didn't even talk about it last week. Yeah. Although I don't think there's much to dissect. Like I said, I just don't think it's a real game. The extraterrestrial head is playing. He is playing. Like Georgia's people are playing. I just don't know how. I think I guess Brock Bowers is undetermined at this point. I would be flabbergasted if he played. Yeah. Well, just from the injury standpoint Correct. and his future, which he has not announced his future. I think in a year where he was I don't think anybody at this point is injury free. No. But a year with less trauma might be the better word. I think he would absolutely play because he's a shout out to the old school, to where he actually likes the school he plays for. Yes. Actually we're, loves the game. And we're talking about Georgia's tight end, Brock Bowers. He is a consensus top, at least a top 20 top, pick yeah, in the first round. 15, yeah. First round, he's eligible to go to the draft. He has not. Uh, announced if he's staying for his oh, senior gone. year or if he's going to the draft. He gone because he's the first tight end off the board. I don't. That may be if the get, tenth pick. Be getting the weeds on those message boards. People seem to think oh, that yeah. the Saban's gone trumps too. The, the millions of dollars because he may be making me. Uh, I mean, he, he, he is. Would. Yeah, yeah, he would be with NIL, but uh, I still with as high of a draft pick as he will be. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, I don't think his stock can get any better because unlike yeah. our. Ayahuasca friend, he came back in 27 days. Perfect transition. Oh, That's what I man. wanted to get I into. I had one more thing to say, but Go I ahead, say it. It. Go ahead, Sheriff. No, the uh, shout out to the Players Lounge. I think that's a podcast for the team. Uh -huh. I'm sure there's some dollar dollar bills getting slid around too, because one of the players, number 22, Mr. Bullard, has a grill that he wears during the Players Lounge podcast that probably costs more than my house. But uh, anyway, they were calling it the mad, my man in the back with the bleep button needs to get ready, the mad as F bowl is what they're oh, calling really? it. Oh, Okay. Interesting. And, and I don't know where that came from, but Mr. Bullard and Mr. Meeks, so number 22 and the former number 17 were... Very tickled by that description. Oh, that's interesting. But back to your earlier transition, I want to get Pack fired up. Piggybacking on you there, Sleaze, because you're uh, probably right that nobody cares. <laughs> to get Pack fired up, the Ayahuasca I champion, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. We just need to start calling it DMT. Uh, there's, there's a report. Ayahuasca. Sources. Sources. Mm. Aaron Rodgers likely to be Shefty. medically clear. Shout out to Shefty. Week. He had an interception at practice. Is that where you were going? I just wanted to get him fired <laughs> he up. Did. He did. He did. No bull. Beep. He had a um, bullish on the fact that ESPN, don't believe him, but said he, he took some defensive snaps. Maybe he's working <laughs> on the back pedal and had an interception at practice. So Fact check it. So so stupid. Go ahead, give us some analysis so here, Pac Man. Come on, Pac. We got There's no way. Quiet There's here no way. So, Jets eliminated from playoff contention. He's going to come out and play uh, next week. Are they? Did they, they lose to the today. Dolphins today? They got, got shellacked. Of course, of course. Shellacked thirty to nothing. So, especially talk, after talking with uh, Achilles John with about his Achilles Swole injury. Swole of Valley. Swole of Valley. Yep. There. I mean, there's no. There's no way. That he will be able to come back this fast and play if he really tore his Achilles as bad as they <laughs> they say he did. I'm the sources believe you. say he did. There's no way he could come back and play Spiracy. a football game with what they're describing his injury was. And even if by some miracle he's like a miracle 
product of God that just oh, whatever yeah. can, the spirit. It, it doesn't make it still doesn't make sense for him to that we're even talking about this. It's ridiculous. He, like just he just wants to show you he's better than you. He, it's that's all he is because he's such a d bag. Oh, get the bleep button ready. <laughs> no, I believe I'm. I'm not gonna. Cuss. He's a jackass. Yeah. Go ahead and say it. Yeah. Man. Just like just, people that don't invite you to South I, Carolina. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it. Maybe, I'm sorry, I'll put the mic down. Be, maybe he's trying to be an inspiration he for is the not, scroll of alleys of the world. He is it? not. He stop. wants people to talk about Aaron Rodgers. That's stop his it. football season. Yeah. yeah. Stop being so soft, swole of alley. Get up, get up on both yeah. feet. Yeah, I've, I've said that to him. <laughs> well, I'm like, man, Aaron Rodgers is back on the playing field. He's like, there's no way. There's no way. Uh, we might need to consider the source on both ends of that. Well, you know, it's just. Because both of them have probably never been wrong. Uh, the source, the source. <laughs> Shout out the sleeves on that one. <laughs> the source that Aaron Rodgers is likely to be medically cleared next week is probably Aaron Rodgers. He's the source <laughs> leaking it, so people will write a story about it. He probably texted Adam Schefter. Ah, uh, the plot thickens on that one, though, because yeah, he it, told Schefter to lose his to number. Lose his number. On but, a free agency but, baloney. Yes, he did. But now that it's convenient for Aaron Rodgers, he probably said, hey, Schefter, Here's my number. Sources say I might come back next he week. Might have slid into the DMs. So he stupid. might have got He's, a little handsy. Hey, handsy not handy. He's not. Yeah. Well, anyway, check old Shefty's ear and yeah. said, "It's it's I'm coming back." Right. So it's, it doesn't make sense. It's stupid. He's he coming just, back. He back. just wants. It, it, He's an inspiration. To just everybody. to piss you uh, off. He's, he's coming. Back. Yeah. He's probably a listener, and he just wants to. <laughs> we don't have enough money to pay <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, he was with Lars in France. Yeah, listen. that's right. Uh, so <laughs> it's just dumb. Transition or not transitioning. Piggybacking on this. Do you like that word? Other, I do. I don't know. Tis me out. The the other great Packers quarterback. So I, me and the uh, special agent the other night watched a 30 for 30 on ESPN on Reggie White. Yeah, very good. Man. Very good. 30 for 30. The preacher. The minister of defense. That's it. Yeah, it's a very good episode because he was very deep into religion and um, kind of controversial mm -hmm. because of his beliefs based on his religion and then and later in life started uh, digging to the origins of, relig of his religion. Not doubting it, but digging to the origin. Anyways, it's a very good one if you go to, to look at it. What I wanted to bring up is... Is that the, that's the name of it, right? The Minister of Defense? Yes, we need 30 to give for 30. 30 for 30. Yeah, the we, ESPN, the, all those films are really good. We have they the, do a good job. We have it. the Minister of K-9, but he's not on 30 for 30. <laughs> Go ahead. That's a great name. <laughs> great name. I yeah. um, think we got it. Yep. Uh, excuse you now, the Minister <laughs> of K-9. Um, Brett Favre was interviewed as part of the oh God. 30 for 30. Was oh he so up yeah. uh, His nose was very red. <laughs> What's yeah, I was going to say, was he high? I can't speak to that. I just know his nose was very red. He packed like any of his quarterbacks. He, he said the year before Reggie White signed with the Packers. So Reggie White was an Eagle for a long time. Philadelphia Eagle, yeah. A legendary defensive player in the NFL in the late 80s and 90s. Yeah, and then yeah. 1992 signed. with the Eagles. Yep. Uh, very, uh, just watch the documentary. It'll show you how good he was. Let me um, fact If you didn't that. know. But uh, he went to the Packers in like 96, 95, somewhere around there. as a free agent. Uh, he actually fought for free agency. Checking with the stat guy. And uh, went over there. So he, he won a Super Bowl with... Helped us win the Super Bowl. With yeah. the Packers. Um, but anyways, so that's why Brett Favre was on this documentary. I want to explain for everybody who wants the connection. They want the backstory in that right here. Everybody wants the backstory. You do a good job with the backstory. I do I, not. That's why we're here to help each other. That's why we're on a team. Yeah. So when you find your new podcast, I hope they help you out as much as I do. No, okay. I, I might have to stay. Might have to swallow. <laughs> oh, now you stay. Anyways, back to my point. The, he, he Brett Favre uh, referenced a specific sack that Reggie White made on him the year before he came to the Packers. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Who remembers? But he said, that was the moment I became addicted to pain pills. <laughs> Oh my God! So, oh, in essence, we, he blamed Reggie White yeah. for being hooked on pain. Yeah. Oh Christian, he, he blamed the yeah. Christian, faithful, uh, faithfully on, religious man on the on the guy's own thirty for thirty. He, and Reggie like, White has passed away. This yeah, is all yeah, he died a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. R.I.P. Because he had a massive heart attack at age forty-three. Very sad. Yeah. Um, so this is all done in man. remembrance of him and kind of recounting his life and Brett Favre. These guys, man, they just can't get over themselves. <laughs> and I and I'm a Brett Favre fan, but come on, man, like whatever. Blame it on Reggie White. The little like 
We got a, <laughs> we got so a shout out. Y'all getting a little more. Oh, uh, maybe. We got a shout out. Uh, yes. The day after Christmas 2004, the, yeah, the, the preacher minister of defense. was rushed from Cornelius, North Carolina to a nearby hospital in Huntersville. Shout out to Coach Cleve. Coach <laughs> Cleve, yeah. The cause of death was determined to be arrhythmia. So you're. Yeah. So I watched the documentary. You taking, were you taking notes? I'm a sponge for knowledge, like man. Like CNN. You Although are. I do get my dates and numbers confused. As we, and names sometimes. <laughs> oh, we've done on the like, podcast. like Rain Man over there. Uh, but no, it was a good one. But uh, I just wanted to, I just want to get Pac fired up. You know? Maybe maybe Jordan Love won't be a weirdo. Like, nah, he's yeah, a weird carbon. Right. He's just going to suck. So whatever. <laughs> you know. I was about to ask, would you rather have one of the weirdos or Jordan Love who's... He's, he's done okay, he's, but yeah, they're, I mean, they're not going to make the playoffs as it look uh, like now with the loss it's today. Not, and it's not his fault because it's a uh, stupid... Uh, Oh, it ain't his fault. Well, huh? he's, he's, he's part of the blame. More attendance than everybody else. Our defensive is why it ain't coordinator his fault. needs to be fired like last year. It is mm. ridiculous. It is. I didn't get to watch the game. It wasn't on TV here, but I was following and like. You could have hacked in. I don't know how to. I'm, I'll help anyway, you. yeah, help me out next time. But I it's will. just ridiculous. You. They had uh, what's what's uh, if I was Franco's there, boy. Or... His quarterback, uh, Baker, Mayfield. Baker Mayfield, out there looking like the, Joe Montana. Yeah, with the three that, black names. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's it. Yeah. Almost that ran the cops for three seconds. Yeah, for, Baker yeah, Mayfield. Yeah. He needed a, needed that extra ten in there. But he in a that, twist of fate, that was released as the Stetson Bennett video was. too. Go ahead, Pac, I'm sorry. Anyway, they had him out there looking like you're fired up. Football Jesus. Jump shot Jesus <laughs> out there. Shout <laughs> out. <laughs> and, like, and it's not because he's good. It's because our defense sucks. They had Preston Smith, a defensive end, covering Mike uh, Mike Evans. Evans. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm getting too far in the weeds. Yeah. Nobody cares except me. So no, we, we sorry care. for for boring you. Part of your nickname. It is a so blown assignment. There. It, it is so stupid. It was a. I think it was by design. I think it was the, the I, I don't know. Fire I don't, them all, then. Fire them all. Yeah, so well, anyway, uh, they, they gave up, I think they scored 34 points. Last week, the Giants, who can't, can't have some Italian kid playing yeah, quarterback the mafia. that nobody has ever heard of, slinging the ball out there looking like Tom Brady. He's gone some, viral. Yeah, he has. And he put, you know how much the Giants scored this week? Tommy DeVito. How much? Yeah. Uh, six points. They didn't have two six field points. goals. It's Man, so stupid. Y'all are, are going too fast for the stat guy. Sorry, yeah. but when they play the Packers, they give up like thirty. So anyway, that they do. The, pa the Packers did score some points. Uh, we scored. The Giants lost twenty-four to six to Derek Carr in the New Orleans Saints. Yeah. Well, they only put up six points because uh, thirty-four twenty for poor Pac-Man. Yeah, at well, home too. At home, at Curly at Lambeau's home. field. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Haven't lost Damn. in December at Lambeau in like oh, a decade. Help me, Tom Cruise. Yeah. You need the guy. Yeah. You need the old hippie. You need him back. Yeah, need whatever. Him. Go, need go a... put your wedge in the back of your shoe and <laughs> just <laughs> limp your ass out the Lambeau. Bleep it, bleep it, bleep it. Ass is in the Bible. Shout out to Reggie right. White. Anyway, I think I'll we've got all that out. Got it all out. Yep. Well, Move he, on. Reggie White retired as a little yeah. trivia question. Oh, did he, he go back to the Eagles not. and do it? Oh, no, I'm pulling a little okey-doke on you here. Or did he go to the Panthers? I don't remember. Oh, oh, you are a damn nut. Retired in the year 2000 for the stinky-ass Carolina Panthers. I thought I remembered a yes, cameo he made there. Yes, he did. All right, well, God rest his soul. Good documentary. Check it out. Uh, it'll make you think. He started with a really damn good team name in the USFL in Correct. 84. The, yep. Steamboat. For the Memphis Steamboat. I need that hat. You do. Uh, anyway. So the, we do uh, have some listener questions that came this year. I just wanted to get Pac fired up on his old quarterbacks. I always love it. You know, if you ever want to get Pac-Man unraveled, just yeah, start talking about one of those two guys. Either one of the We're two. We're just going to gloss over the 9-7 to seven debacle <sighs> an hour and 50 one. minutes away. All right, I'm through give, South Carolina. I'm gonna give you three minutes on it because I don't think it deserves uh, a percent of our show. We're talking about the Falcons playing the Carolina Panthers today. You the could ticket, got a ticket for fifty cent, forty nine cents. They were going for less than a dollar. Sixty nine cents. <laughs> they were going for less than a dollar. I think the nobody, good seats were four dollars. Nobody wanted to see this train wreck of two franchises that are just at the absolute worst. 
Um, make, making matters worse, the Falcons shouldn't be at their absolute worst because they have a lot of great players. They don't have a quarterback, and their coach is inept at managing the game. Author. Oh, and the quarterback cannot hold on to the ball. Costly turnovers all the time. They I do. saw some throws that should have been yes. interceptions. They, but, yeah. Or, they do have maybe the best running back in the game, though. But Some people Dallas. call him Bijan, but, and some call him Bijan. <laughs> Everybody can see that, and the coach Arthur Smith is like, "Ah, hey, let's give him five carries a game. Yeah. Let's don't use him because we don't want to let him air it out. Yeah, let him air it out, and then give it to Algier, which Algier is fine. Yeah. He's you know big bruising running back to run. Let's don't use our best player because yeah. we don't get yeah. tired for the all. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, now, he won't be there. Uh, that is Arthur Bajan. I think is contractually obligated. No, Arthur yes. Smith, the coach, needs to be let go. He has proven that he cannot manage a game. He's a hell of an interview, though, if any Pat McAfee fans are out there, because he's cutting up with the boys. I'm sure he's a nice guy. Thursdays. His dad's a billionaire. Owner of FedEx. When you have that safety net to fall on, you can be kind of loosey-goosey. Yeah. You know, Why not? who I cares if you fail? Mm, loosey-goosey. Loosey-goosey. Mm, another shirt idea. There you go. All right, you ready for some questions? Yes, let's get to it. Let's do uh, it. Everybody's in the Christmas mood this, yeah, this no, week. Not so, uh, oh, yeah, a bit. So uh, not a Christmas guy. Kind of a kind of a, not a, Christmas, a Christmas guy. Not a Christmas guy. Hold the phone. Too much pressure. Oh, I just man. want the booze. Uh, and I'm not even a big drinker, but a little just sprinkle in a little booze. Family, obviously food, football. I can do so, without the gifts. This is my question. Do you uh, this is for everybody here. Do y'all do spousal gifts? Like, do you get your spouse a Christmas present? Yeah, I will. Mm -hmm. It'll be like at the whatever's later than the eleventh hour. That's when I'll be buying the gift. I mean, are they uh, like gift gifts? gifts? Some are of they... them get returned. Some of the best gifts I've given to Deflate Gate <laughs> got returned. <laughs> I bought her a rose gold, and I can see it like it was yesterday. Not platinum. Okay. Went to went to uh, it was rose gold and diamond. It was way too much money for a one-time gift. Uh, I think it was $900 plus. Bought it, went to the store multiple times, talked to them, several whispering eyes for, to get their opinions, gave it to Big Brain, have never seen it again. <laughs> she she finally it. came she back. It. She finally came back. No, Big Brain is not, does not have the criminal mind. Shout out to that show, good show. She took it right back to the same store. <laughs> he gone, or she gone, whatever the necklace, whatever gender the necklace had. Okay, so you're we'll say she gone because it so was you rose and, gold. So you and Big Brain try to do big gifts for each other. Negative. But uh, that was a lesson you... learned. All right. Don't yeah. I don't buy Big Brain jewelry one, but I will buy her something. I have okay. learned over the years even a handwritten note. Okay. Is better than trying to go. So I have three different couples in my life. Crazy. Couple uh, categories. Categories. Well, there, 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 there are couples. Fish bowls getting yeah. bigger and bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're so tight. <laughs> so there are couples that do. An aquarium over here. <laughs> there are couples that do big gifts for each other. By big gifts, I mean it's like jewelry for the women and something electronic for the men. There are couples that do a thoughtful gift like that. They, money is not the the point of it. Yeah. It's a thoughtful gift. And then there are a special agent myself who, if we want something during the year, she gets it, and I talk about getting it, and then I never do because I'm cheap. Uh, and uh, then when it comes squeaky. to Christmas, we buy gifts for everybody else, and we enjoy spending time with everybody. That's us. Not that it's right. It's just us. And so those, those are the categories that have come in my life. So I just want to know what category y'all work. I'm I'm confused on the third. Is you saying the third is like a gag gift? No, the files? third. No, the third is we don't get each other gifts. We talk about it and then no, we never do it. I'm saying we don't get each other gifts because during the year, if she wants something, she goes and gets it. And if I want something, I talk about getting it and I never get it ah. for myself. But I talk about it. So you don't spend money and she does. Except when during it comes the, the year. podcast. Yeah, equipment. except for the podcast. Equipment. The boom boom room is outfitted to the nines. So are you category? Expensive gifts for each other or just thoughtful gifts? Because y'all both said you get gifts for your spouses. I, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be expensive, but it's not like a thoughtful gift. Um, usually pretty practical. 
Um, is it something that she puts on a wish list, or you have to, so, be, or do you have to be cunning and listen uh, to hints throughout the year? So we know both. That Pac is a very cunning man. Both, but um, the past couple of years, I think we've both just like written out a list mm -hmm. um, of a bunch of things, and I'm like the easiest person to shop for because I want everything all the time. But um, mm. and uh, pause. pause. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, and then like we. I've just gotten each other something off that list. So like last year, I got a, a pair of uh, Air Max. I got okay. a cooler, um, just stuff that was like practical, but not cheap either. So was it a Yeti cooler? It was an Arctic backpack. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there you go. You'll probably see me carry it around like functions or at, at the pool yeah. or something yeah, like that. Shout out Arctic. They make a good product. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I, think that, I think that explains yeah. it. Yeah. And the sheriff is all over the place. No, I'm number two. But that was by uh, my own demise. I got you. Because I thought the more money, the, the, I'm, mm. I'm fast into Big Brain's heart, and I learned, no, sir. No. Nope. All about thought. That's it. There you go. Have no idea what I'm going to get her. Have no idea what I got her last year or the year before. I can't. Yeah, I can't remember. But I got her anything. something. I'm trying to think what I got Doc Lolliday last year. I remember what she got me, which is, I guess, probably the more important thing to remember. Correct. Um, but I don't remember what I got her. Actually, last year we agreed not to do gifts for financial purposes. We pulled a sleaze. There you go. Frugal. And the year before that. Frugalness. What did I get her the year before that? Yeah. Let, me, let me stew upon that. That's fine. How about we get into the question while if they pop up and mm -hmm. all your you thoughts know, do randomly yes. there, Sheriff. You could just throw it in there 15 minutes from now. Just an interjector. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Crosberry. Yeah, I couldn't think of his name. All right. All right. Uh, Crosberry wanted to know what's the best Christmas gift you ever received. The special agent also asked this question, so everybody's in a Christmas mood. Oh. I guess. Uh, do you have anything that sticks out over the years as a child, as an adult? Who won the strawberry lube last year? Because that was a good gift. <laughs> uh, that was Scott. Well, Scott Bobby opened it. No, nah, it got stolen. I do remember Danny somebody had died because he fell, ripping the bag open, or. A glass? No, uh, I think, yeah. Background. You, yeah, just, nobody knows yeah, what we're talking a, about right now. Uh, Pac-Man's Christmas party last year is what uh, yeah, white 2022 elephant. is what uh, there we go. Thank yeah. you. the sheriff is referring to. Yeah, did a white elephant. And, yeah, uh, a, lot of, a lot of weird gifts came weird, out. And it's, uh, it's really as, fun. As this year. As, <laughs> as evidenced by the... No, it wasn't evidenced by that. <laughs> yeah, correct. <laughs> it was evidenced by... Never mind. Uh, Never I, I played you tell because I don't remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah later. Things that ended up on people's foreheads. Oh, I, somebody, yeah, I heard y'all talking about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't think that tradition is dying anytime soon either. No. Uh, I always had good Christmases as a child because my mama sleeves would always give me something that I enjoyed playing with. I don't remember one because they all were good growing up. I was blessed to have a, you know, we didn't get a ton for Christmas. We yes. got good Agreed. things for Christmas so it wasn't a uh, wasn't a plethora of gifts but it was good gifts that were given so yeah. I don't even remember a one and once I've gotten an adult I can't stand gift giving like I just See, I, you don't like it either I, I love try, it I love giving gifts to I love giving gifts to kids and my nieces I love giving Barry. gifts to them um, but I don't mind giving gifts to other people I just feel like as adults we're all we're all fortunate enough in my family to provide for ourselves. And so I think we all get what we want. Like my dad, you can't buy Papa Sleazy anything. That dude has, if he has a has a whiff of something that he wants, he's got it. He's got, he just bought himself a tractor with a backhoe on it. He lives on three acres awesome. in the city limits of Edenton, Georgia. Love a good tractor with a backhoe. So every time I see him now, I ask him if he's, dig, if he's dug a hole yet. <laughs> Oh, I don't think he's dug a hole. Yeah, yet. but he has a tractor. tractor. Yeah. Well, you might even buy him a ghillie suit for uh, to sneak up on the wildlife. Already has one. Has a has a blind. He does have a bear problem. They've been. Uh, <laughs> does Pac know about this? I don't know. Pop, Pop Sleeve doesn't like to talk about his business, but he does have oh. a black bear problem. They get into I figured this was pretty mild. Mm. <laughs> it's a black bear. Oh, okay. It's not brown. Is that is not, that not polar bear? Is, that, is, is black, black bear? Is that code? Yeah, is that code? It's a bear. He's got a trash basket. He's got a black a black bear. Black bear. He's got, a, he's got a bear of color. Yeah. On his, uh, <laughs> right. And then 
Attention is anyway, fair. Okay, got it. I've got the pictures to prove it. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's still with that. No, I think we're gonna get canceled. I think uh, my my personal bet is that next time I see my dad, he'll be wearing a bear coat. <laughs> oh my God. Well, Black face. <laughs> No, we're definitely canceled. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Yeah, gentlemen, uh, it was a pleasure and an honor to last work episode with you for 13 of, episodes. Last episode of 2023 yeah. and... Let me tell you something, Sleazy. Judging by the kid that got damn near canceled for having black and red on his face at the Chiefs game yes. in Las Vegas two weeks ago, don't do it. Yeah, that was Sleazy, don't do it. <laughs> Uh, that bear goes after his chickens. So, with, <laughs> man, that's a lot. Either, either this is for real Packer. There's a lot of innuendo <laughs> going on. It's you know, a real. I'm still deciphering. <laughs> well, after, I'll be well, the judge. Yeah, we'll release anyway, it on the ground. Any, you don't have any favorite gifts growing up. Uh, oh, this is growing up, not right. an adult. Oh, it could be any Change time. the subject for us, Pat. Oh, man. I don't. With the black face. Uh, I, nothing that just sticks. I mean, all. Every. Oh, pause. <laughs> I don't, no, I don't know. I'm, all of my gifts that I've gotten have been great. Thank you, everybody who's ever gotten me a gift. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. That says somebody who wants more gifts. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. He's trying to keep the podcast alive. Yeah. And I will do that as well, I will say, because it's coming back into the mainstream. Even though we're anything but that. I got a starter jacket. Oh, we got a picture of the bear of color on here. Mm. Mm. Looks like somebody uh, <laughs> All right, moving on. dressed up in a gorilla suit. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, oh. <laughs> during, the, yeah. during the riots. During the riots. Yeah. Uh, uh, somebody with a yeah. 50 on yeah. their number. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Is he shooting basketball like that certain uh, individual? No, no, anyway. What's your favorite gift? Starter. NFL starter, starter jacket. Starter coat, yeah. It was $60 were... back in oh, those were 1990, nice. whatever. Those, those and jackets were awesome. The Cowboys, I'm not saying necessarily I was a Cowboys fan. The Cowboys were obviously America's team, America's team more so in the 90s than they are now, or they're still the most expensive. Yeah. franchise or the highest valued franchise mm -hmm. but there was more winning going on then under Jerry, Jerry Jones has a lot of acquaintances to pay for go yeah, ahead <laughs> under Barry Switzer and then Jimmy Johnson mm -hmm. but yeah I bought the I succumbed to the peer pressure and bought the $60 well I didn't buy Jack mom and dad better said mom bought the $60 cowboy starter jacket <laughs> in New me. England you wore the the star and Patriots played land. snow football in the star. Wow! And risked it all because you that thing could have been torn to pieces because it had the now those the were quarter zip in, with the little I don't even know in, what that's uh, called like the breastplate little yeah. napkin thing. For all these youngins that don't know, go yeah. Google Come on. starter jackets. No, they they're, they're coming back in. I know, but well, yeah, you're right. So they do know what they are. I was just trying to explain how big of a deal that was when we were growing huge, up. Huge, yeah. huge deal. Yeah, we're talking. Yeah, I received that gift probably. 20, geez, probably like yeah. almost 30 years ago. That's right. Still remember it. Still remember the price. But I wouldn't have had anything if it wasn't for mom. Of course. My dad's first gift was probably last night with the 50 yeah. Cent Arnold Palmer. <laughs> and he, he will not deny that. I'm not crap talking dad, who is a listener. Shout hey. out to dad and Tammy. Papa Sheriff, was that like him, like a yeah. commissioner? <laughs> yeah, he's the uh, director. He's the, the public director. safety so director yeah, yeah, yeah. in Taylor, South Carolina. Also, that 13 miles from Mulberry Street. <laughs> okay. This also reminds me that I needed to. We've had a couple questions on why you are known as the sheriff. Yes, that's a good segue right there. That's your nickname. I'm the I'm reason. Being quiet. The reason. The, the, the reason. reason. <laughs> the reason. <laughs> the white lightning's yeah, kicking in. Good. The reason that we call him the sheriff is he lives in a very small town called. Winterville, Georgia, and uh, he is uh, love it. He's a Leo and has a car that is very much marked with the lights and all that. And uh, he likes to honk his horn to his neighbors. I do. Uh, just a nice guy. Nice. Uh, is anybody who knows him knows he's very sociable. So I started calling him the sheriff of Winterville, which they don't have a sheriff. They don't have a, a sheriff's department. So I thought it was a great name because uh, he's the sheriff of Winterville. 
So that's why that's where the name came from. I know it's not a great story, but at least it gives some context on why it's called wow. sheriff. And because it's you and there's a, like a bazillion alternative meanings, if anything major does happen in Winterville, which knock on wood, most of the time it doesn't, it, it's normally a jurisdictional nightmare because yeah. two counties run through the town. Two two counties, a city. I love everybody at the city, but that's normally like a sec. I think it, even the people that work there would classify that as like a second career type city with a lot of traffic interdiction. Big Brain is very familiar with their traffic interdiction. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's a combination of a bunch of jurisdictions and we don't normally deal with this type of stuff. Type that's correct. Deal. But the sheriff is ready and willing. And the, the four-legged the four -legged partner of the sheriff has uh, been utilized in the city of Winterville, so we, uh, we love it. All right, well, next question from the special agent. I don't know if she meant to send this to another podcast because she knows us very well. I don't know why she asked this question, but she wanted to know what the best book we read this year was. I actually have read a book there this year. There you go. Tell us. I am about to get terribly controversial, but we've already brought blackface, so go ahead. <laughs> uh, I'm worried. Just, go ahead. It was, it was just a book about the origins of sex money murder. Ah. Uh, uh, gang, for those that don't know. So it was, it was a good book. Yeah. Interesting, though. So. Is there a... That, before you start, I do find those origins of criminal street gangs be very interesting. They usually have a very uh, interesting character. Yes. That starts them for maybe not... Uh, heroic reasons or anything but there's a something going on financial reason but yeah, it's not necessarily anyway it's just very interesting story interestingly enough peter rolak the in, inventor a, a creator of sex founder, money murder yeah. founder of sex money murder was Never not ago. i mean he was he didn't even live in the projects he was like lived in a I don't yeah. want to say a suburb, but he wasn't like growing up in the hood it's just interesting no, so he, all interesting. yeah all right, peter, go ahead sure peter who peter rolak Go ahead, Sheriff. Pistol Pete. Roll that. Do you have a book? You want me to go while you're doing your stats over there? Yeah, I want you. I'm looking up Peter. Pistol Pete. Yeah. Is that a... Not Pistol Pete. Pistol oh, Pete Maravich, but the other one. Yes. The Bronx, New York. Go ahead, Sleeve. Soundview Projects. Uh, Shout out. Only <laughs> book I've read, which is actually quite interesting, uh, because I've never done it this way. So I grew up in church and have heard the Bible... Um, sermons from the Bible my whole life, but uh, this year my son got me a uh, read the Bible through the year. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that, I don't know, back in the spring. And so um, it's just an interesting way to do it because you hear all the verses and all that, but you never actually read it in context. And so Is they, it chronological? It's chronological. This particular author has broken it up based off chronological. So That's it jumps cool. around from books and uh, chapters in those books to kind of uh, tell the story. Okay, so, so it's it, not just like Genesis, Exodus... Correct. Leviticus. Correct. We got a Bible man here in the yeah. middle. So, um, yeah, I, yeah, it's very interesting. I recommend it to anybody who has. Doesn't matter what your religious beliefs are. It's a, the Bible is a very historic um, account of save of the human, show, of, Lee. of humanity. Save the show. Uh, so, anyways, it's very interesting. It's been very enlightening and changed the way I thought about a few things. So, man. anyway, that's it. I have to get that. I have to get yeah. the name of that book. I'll 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 be be interested in. Yeah. Was the minister? Sorry, back for interrupting you. Was the minister Arnold. of K9 the author? He was not consulted, no. Uh, but uh, the sheriff have. isn't it? Just opened the Arnold Palmer. Mm -hmm. You need some more white lightning to go with that. Thank you, Dad. Just a splash would be awesome. Maybe that like Jake a Mason jar. Right have, up to the bottom of that script A, if you can. Do you have a book? I have not read the book, but I will. <laughs> okay. And. I like it. Go ahead. There's going to be a lot of silence after this, but the documentary off of the book, and I want to make sure I get the name of the book right, the documentary is called The Fall of Minneapolis. Okay. And the book is called They're Lying. Uh, I'm going to mess this up. <clears throat> That's all right. We're here to pause. Why are you, why are you looking that up? Uh, uh, I got it. Go ahead, right. Pat. Just going to say a shout out to one of my Christmas presents this year that I know that I'm getting. Uh, <laughs> uh, That's sleaze, a good story. Too. Yeah, sleaze, change the subject. Sleazy and special agent were uh, at the house, and uh, the Amazon delivery guy came, and uh, I was like, "Oh, this um, 
package got delivered, whatever. And I, I looked on the Amazon because it's my Amazon account that we order stuff from, and it was the book Killers of the Flower Moon. Shout out! I told Doc Lolliday a while back that I wanted to read the book before I saw the movie. Um, I'm like, oh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Okay, she's very disappointed because I was going in my stocking. You ruined the surprise. I ruined the surprise oh, because she ordered because she ordered my Christmas uh, present on my there. Amazon account, and I just happened the, to see that it got yeah. delivered. You didn't so, want the box to get stolen, and now you're in trouble. Yeah. Well, I get notifications when it gets delivered anyway. It says, yeah. So, yeah. Killers of the Flower Moon has been delivered. I'm gonna I'm like, have to oh, say cool. Doc Lala didn't have the best plan on that one, but yeah. it's still your fault. Yeah. Still, I and I'll own it, but I am excited to wait to uh, open the book so I can read it since I did finish yeah. um, my other one. So now I'm just waiting to start another one until Christmas. The right, documentary, The Fall of Minneapolis is by Liz Collin, who I was very impressed with. Her significant other is a Leo, or former Leo, retired Leo maybe, all of the above. The book is called They're Lying, The Media, The Left, and the Death of George Floyd. I, I've been an interesting, interesting one to read uh, several years after all that happened because, yes, not to take words out of your mouth, a lot of things were said in emotion and un. Have uh, you watched the documentary? Because you're you're going. I've seen several things. Out a lot of unverified things got put out and were accepted as truth. Bingo. Um, I think I do want to say because I think it needs to be said, especially people in our position, that the actions that were taken were wrong by the officer all the stuff that happened that transpired around that afterwards got a lot of that got blown out of proportion and uh, obviously just freaking steamrolled into riots and all this stuff that shouldn't have yes. happened so that's yeah my, I, that's I, my I, take on it that's what it is i'm not trying to be a professional podcaster uh i like my day job but uh or night job or it's the hours are to be determined Shout out to the unit for my nickname, TBD, but yeah, I don't, I like the documentary because it's a different angle. I think that's where you were going to just what became a lot of peer pressure and the popular pill to digest, for lack of a better term. Uh, it just raised questions. I like questions. I don't believe anything I hear the first time. No, uh, and then no. we obviously have on the, all sides of the fence. You shouldn't believe the first thing you uh, hear. That's what I mean. As yeah. every documentary is bias, Big Brain reminded me of that because she made it through most of this documentary, and she would read the book in probably five minutes because that's the way she is. But then she, her and the baby was snoring when it, just when it was getting good, and they were taking over the precinct. I heard some snores to my right, but anyway. Our interesting perspective, like you just said, uh, from the Leo side of things, to be honest with you, my biggest uh, takeaway from the documentary was it was absolutely heartbreaking because any officer with experience is no longer an officer uh, in that area and I would probably say nationwide. And that is the bigger issue to me is... So you're saying this focuses on the aftermath of the incident? Uh, I think it does a good job of well, looking at everything, but yes. I think your point to that is what happened afterwards is, we don't have enough time to get into this, but basically uh, the, the, the fall. Yeah. The, the, for Sorry, many, I many just of, thought y'all were going to say bump you and nah, move, it's a, move it's a, along. Wink, no, wink. it's a super interesting topic and it stretches nationwide and I do want to have an episode on that, just not tonight because uh, we're already over an hour and we got two more wow. questions. Oh, yeah, I could talk. Yeah. I would talk I know for, for two hours because yeah. I, I have opinions that and are strong on both yes. ends. As, yeah, you know, as, as you should. Yeah. As we all do, I think we have opinions on, on all sides and we also worked through that time sure did in the leo realm and saw the unfortunate negative side effects yes. that, that calls for all of us on a personal level and also on a professional level having to go to work every day yeah I don't that were to, unfair yeah. on a lot of levels but understood anyways yeah a lot of things got high 20, 2024 sounds like a good episode yeah i don't want to <laughs> <laughs> if that election, never mind, if that election year is anything like uh, the fall of Minneapolis, we uh, we won't be podcasting. Well, uh, we'll be in a bunker. But anyway. That does sound like an interesting book. Uh, the, I I'll leave everyone with this. Again, heartbreaking uh, during or 
prior to that major incident, and I am not discounting that it was not a major incident, mm -hmm. I think we all agree any loss of life is significant. No doubt. Uh, and that's why some of us got into this occupation was to try to prevent some of that. Uh, and you never really know what you prevent. Sometimes you might prevent something just by your mere presence. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not saying that I'm John Wick by any means, it's just you're representing consequences and so people might not do things in front of you is all I'm saying there, not giving myself any personal credit. Say that, say this, before the incident, Minneapolis had 892 officers. Uh, fast forward to, I think it was October of 23 or uh, right before the documentary was released, they were at 512. Yeah, it's a nationwide thing. So, again, put a pin in that one. Yeah. We'll get back to it in 2024. Y'all, so. I'm flabbergasted by y'all's response because... I think it's interesting and it needs to be dissected and I think we have an interesting perspective on it. Yes. Just not tonight. All right, next I, question. I yelled at Big Brain. Sorry, Big Brain. Next question. What is the... This is from uh, CNN, our great guest from last uh, week. Uh, what is the unmanliest hobby or interest you have for CNN? He put it on him. We'll put it out here. He likes musicals. I've never been to a musical. I'm going to a musical. Do we need to phone a friend and tell him we're live and Scott Bobby? <laughs> as far as the, uh, uh, never mind. Something to do with the umpire. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I obviously had a little heads up on this question. I was trying to think. Uh, what, uh, we didn't. Yeah, that's why, that's why I'm talking right now. Okay. So I think probably, as everyone is well aware of, and I've mentioned on the podcast before, uh, <laughs> The unmanliest thing I do is anytime I see the notebook being played or when I'm looking mm. through channels, it stops and it doesn't move until that movie's over with because that's my guilty pleasure, the notebook. So that's probably like the uh, unmanliest interest that I have. Is, I like uh, I'm a fan. But as far as, uh, you know, I don't like musicals. Uh, you know, I don't. No one else is dabbling with me, I see. I don't like. Um, I don't know. I just don't have anything that I deem unmanly. I thought I'm trying to be. No, you're very manly. <laughs> I don't know about that. But, uh... Do you take baths? <laughs> I, I don't. I'm chuckling whoa, because... Whoa, whoa, we whoa, have whoa, a, whoa, 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 We have whoa. a good friend, the Mile High Man. Yeah, who is I a bath, going with it. He is a, a bath... Perpetual a perennial. bath enthusiast. Two. Old Two. Blue. Oklahoma Blue. He's a bath guy? All right, so this conversation came Oklahoma up. Oklahoma Blue. Oh, on Nathan shift one day. Nathaniel Blue. Officer of the Year. That's right. Yeah. I'm sorry, Leo of the Year. God, I'm, we suck at the code now, but that's, that's what right. the listeners yeah. want. That's Long story good. short, we were, uh, the three of us were what they call 25-ing, <laughs> um, sitting there meeting, oh, this um, is so good. chewing the fat, and uh, they got to talking about how they like baths. Him and the Mile High Man. Yeah, him and the Mile High Man, not together with each other, but they <laughs> enjoy baths <laughs> they individually. They are on <laughs> And uh, I, just, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. So, uh, next time <laughs> it was came around time to buy Nathaniel Blue a gift. Yeah. I got him some uh, yeah. lavender bubble bath, a bath the mix, bath bomb? some bath bombs. Yeah. Cause, uh, so, anyway. Aren't yeah. you sweet? Uh, that was your most unmanly thing <laughs> yeah, buying him a gift. Yeah. Uh, I guess yeah. I, I I don't know. I'm a big Taylor Swift fan as we've yeah. I'm a Swifty so that's pretty Unmanly, yeah, you hide behind your daughter. Like, I do oh, hide behind my daughter. Swift, yep. Are you going to be? Are you going to be equal opportunity and take her to see Beyonce? Pack. I'm answering a question with a question. But, uh, no. It's worth you're the time. You're not a Beyonce or what do they call those things? Uh, uh, the, I'm not in the Bay Hive. The Bayhive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you go there, buddy. Uh, <laughs> the Aaron Rodgers is rising up in you. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> Obviously, y'all are just two damn manly men in the Bay in the Bay High. <laughs> She uh, is Queen B, and queen she B. is absolutely very, very yeah. attractive. She, well, not that she is, but uh, uh, I don't know. I, she's not that's my answer. I like the only that. thing that's my that I do is I let the special agent do my nails. Okay. Like, I haven't cut my nails in seven years. 
Really? Toe or finger. Will you go and get a pedicure? Nope. Okay, I've done it. I, I, That's not my answer, but I've done it. I'm not saying I wouldn't, I just don't want to spend the money to do it. Most, un, most unmanly. That was his question. Pedicure, pedicure would be pretty high on that. Yeah. Uh, I was never a baseball shave your arms guy. Yeah, I had a couple of those uh, teammates. Oh, that's that's, that's not most of them, I got, I got a new answer. Oh, look at that. I read <laughs> mind. Oh, that's a mic. Come on, Pat. What do you got? You've kind of been absentee the last. You kind of uh, yeah, come on. You need it off for me. Yeah. You, you shave your arms? Not my arms. Oh, that's <laughs> not unmanly. <laughs> <laughs> or is that unmanly? Uh, I don't know. I get. I don't know. Is that unmanly? It's no, her, it's her it's preference. You, yeah. I think it's, it's when you shave things that are I, like your legs and your arms. People oh, no, see. no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. I'm not talking okay. about manscaping. Yeah, I manscape, uh, and I don't know if that, I thought no. that was unmanly. I think if you were to talk about years and years ago, yes, that was unmanly. Oh, like 70s? Yes, hair was... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hair was hair, let's just say that. There it is. Pause. I guess pedicures is mine. I can think of a... I can think... I got a lot of vices, obviously, but I don't know if any of them are unmanly. Oh, well, we'll do the pedicure with that. How about another one pops but up? But it helps mind. with... Foot, but the, I will explain to the listeners, not that they care, they're probably vacuuming or doing some... Well, turned off. Oh, now where we're we're yeah, or... Stop when I brought up my book because <laughs> it's terribly controversial. To write a letter to Jer. That's it. <laughs> Dear Jer, this guy is terrible. <laughs> Fire him immediately. Um, the pedicures help with foot odor, and I do have, and I love the man. He is probably my favorite athlete. I do have Shaq feet. <laughs> oh, if oh, anybody's well, seen Shaq's feet, they know. Okay why I'm saying that. So you're saying your pedicure is for the overall health of the marriage and Correct. kids? Definitely for big brain. Okay. Well, that's not unmanly. And that's... I have taken some Epsom salt baths. Okay. Community well, showers, is that manly need... or unmanly? I think that's the yeah, manliest think, uh, of them all. I think those are forced. I don't think you do those by choice. And this is a little transition for you, and I want to shout out uh, midwife Midler, Okay. Who's expecting to okay. set a baby shower? They live in South Georgia. We did go to a burlesque show in the cellar theater of UGA, and that was very unmanly. Okay. <laughs> All right, shout, on. shout out. Uh, Last who, question. Do we need to tell them what burlesque is? I don't think we actually know what it is. <laughs> like a suggestive, is that a good word for it? Yeah. Like a tease type show? It's a maybe? tease show. Yeah, there you go. From what I understand. The well, last question. Tease it back to you. <laughs> Confident Kyle. Yes. Back in the game after a couple of weeks MIA. Probably pondering whether or not he accepts his new nickname or not. If he wants to say anything and get bumped back down. <laughs> so um, depends on this question. Yeah. Uh, so he says, if you had the death penalty, he didn't say what crime, <laughs> what would your last meal be? Oh, man. Ooh. It's a decent question. Oh, something fell. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, last jerked. meal. Getting I guess the last the one you're ever going to eat. Um, I would go something like, I don't know, definitely something chain. Because I, I love Bojangles biscuits, chicken biscuits. You, got, you could do better than that, man. But the, not, it's not the point of what, what how uh, high class can you go. It's about what is the last thing you want to taste before you're... Gone from this world. Uh, I'm lost. I'm, yeah, I know what I know what my meal is. But that's the, I, I think, think they're going to the, serve that up. <laughs> All right. A conjugal so, visit. A conjugal <laughs> visit. And just put just put right in the chair. All right. Uh, Good night, everybody. <laughs> yeah, forever. <laughs> Uh, so, I'm sorry, good, Jer. It's been a good 13 <laughs> episodes. Uh, no, that's, my thought process is the last yes. thing that yes. you enjoy Actual in life. Actual food. No, that you enjoy in I life. I think we need, to, yeah, we need some fine print here. Actual food yeah, that, so I don't hijack it. That doesn't matter about the cost. Because, yes, I understand. Like, oh, it's your last meal. You should get lobster and steak yeah, and all that. Right. But Yes, from Nikolai's roof. I was, it depends. Took it. But it depends right on who cooks it, mind. how they cook it, when they give it to me. As long as you give me a Bojangle biscuit that's wrapped up and been cooked in the past three hours, I can eat that <laughs> anytime. It's so good. All right, but when you die, certain things are going to happen, like 
lose control yeah, of your body. Yeah, there you go. So I'll be dead. <laughs> yeah, but still, you there's some dignity in death, isn't it? Uh, I mean, not for me. I'm gone. Well, you got the death penalty. Yeah, you're gonna be. You, yeah, hey, that's really just angling for a Bojangles uh, sponsor. <laughs> yeah, that's really what I'm going yeah, for. Yeah. That might override the potion they give you with all the salt and that Cajun chicken okay, well, biscuit is fabulous. Yeah, exactly. That's what I would have. So tell me about your high fluent meal there, Pat. You're gonna have. Yeah, come on, Pat. With your pinky, uh, pick, Wolfgang pick, Puck come in and Pete Carroll was gonna <laughs> sit down and join. <laughs> I watched him and Doc Lolliday eating a romantic meal That's together it. while, you know. I, Through a one-sided uh, yeah. mirror That's right. while they yep. watch you die. That's it. I don't know. I, I, well, what did they tell uh, Tiger Woods that he was going to make when he won the uh, Masters? I thought fried chicken and watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, are you, are you, remember, definitely you know canceled. what I'm talking about? Well, yeah, I guess you're going that angle, aren't you? Uh, I really don't know. I mean... He's going with a very indigenous meal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you man. can't, that's... Uh, I'm going to have to cut uh, this episode all yeah, 30 yeah, minutes ago. Yeah, you might. I don't know. One man, of them, I, and, yeah, that's... One of them is like a precursor to a meal, and then one of them is actually, part of a meal. Uh, interesting fact about me, I actually don't even like watermelon. So, on principle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better, can, you better yeah. cut that off, edit. <laughs> Funny enough, we... Uh, Special Agent and I bought a watermelon moonshine and a white lightning and I didn't even want to go through the argument so I brought the white lightning and left the watermelon downstairs. Yeah, uh, you knew what was yeah, up. Yeah. Although it's quite delicious. Mm -hmm. We do have orange, uh, like an orange soda. From a rival. From a rival. Company. Just to make sure we got everybody covered. There we go. Which company is this from? People, uh, the sheriff brought this in. Old Forge. Old Forge. Because uh, the sheriff is never short on liquid nice drinks. Nice and cold. Mm, chilled. Oh, man. Some may say. Surprised he doesn't get uh, any more wrecks because just bottles rolling around his vehicles because he has so many liquids all the time. Yeah, I put pause. I put him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I put him in the back seat. So safety shout, first. Shout out to the law. Okay. Because I don't want to be stopped with moonshine in my front seat. I don't think. Unopened. So I would turn the interior lights on for him though if it was at night. As a courtesy. Full circle moment there. Yeah, my last meal would be. Are you ready for this? Benny Hanna's. <laughs> Benny Hanna's, okay. I'm a huge fan. All right. And Pac knows that I'm a soul man. So I, the, I, I like going to Peachtree Street, or Peachtree Road, excuse me, in Buckhead anyway. And obviously you can do the just dessert at the Cheesecake Factory because that's all the big brain I do. And you could get your meal at Benny Hanna's. Okay. But I love Benny Hanna's and the... Well, what I meant to say you, is the I setting. I got you. The yum yum sauce too. Yeah, I don't know if they're they're not gonna cook it up in front of you though. There, does that take away from the meal? Oh, they're gonna you? cook it. If I'm dying, <laughs> <laughs> they're cooking it in front of me. Demanding. Yeah, you know? that's it. You have all the leverage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Die the next day. Do they have to give you? Is that like a thing? Yeah, I don't. But yeah, they have to a, give you the thing. Do you really get a, like a last meal we'll of your have, choosing? We'll have to have a guest from a. a death penalty prison. Yeah, I, I would ask her, but I think you do get a choice of food, maybe not of where it's cooked or yeah. who cooks it. Right. Yeah, I, I would ask my dad, but he was... The only reason I think you do is because... The Department of Corrections. There's always the, uh, when somebody, because it's very rare these days that somebody actually gets the death penalty, like actually is executed. Yeah. Uh, they always come out with their last meal. It's like a thing or yeah. everybody wants to know all the time. So I think they kind of, I think the my opinion would be, since it's so popular, they kind of play into it. Yeah, it's like folklore, I guess. You're saying the facility so, is yeah. playing into it. It kind well, of I mean, softened the blow of, of the death penalty. Yeah, it's kind of humane, yeah. humanity. Right. Even though they're Shout getting the death penalty. Humanity. Humanity. Right. They're getting the death penalty for doing something that wasn't yep. humane. We're not getting into that tonight, mm -hmm. so yeah. moving well, on. We can tackle that in our 20, Fall of Minneapolis episode. Yeah. When we come back as a, get canceled and come back under a different name. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a, yep. like a good club on That's Clayton right. Street. That's right. Yeah. Get canceled, you just come back. Well, so resurrected as a different name. That's it. All right. I appreciate y'all uh, going through this journey with me on this podcast in 2023. Oh, I and thought you were going to cut it off right there. No, I mean, I, I just want to say I appreciate y'all. Uh, it is a sacrifice for everybody to set time aside to do it, even though we do enjoy it once we get here yes. doing it. So, But I do appreciate uh, you and the sheriff and Pat, because you do have families and kids. 
and commitments and all that. We do move it around to do this. Have friends. I do appreciate friends, and I do appreciate everybody who does listen. Once again, without y'all, we would uh, just be talking to ourselves, which we would do. We would do it, but we do appreciate everybody yeah, we listening. Do, we do do that. And, uh, <laughs> I think 2024, we're gonna we've kind of uh, kind of footing on what we're doing. Not that it's great, but we have an idea for what we want to do in 2024, and I think it's going to be better, and uh, I think it's going to be more engaging for everybody. Maybe, so uh, maybe the people got some ideas. Yeah, you know what? That's one thing me and Pack were talking about when we were hiding out from the sheriff. That um, yeah. uh, if anybody has any suggestions on what they may like to hear, you can let us know. Uh, we probably won't care. Uh, I'm just kidding. We'll listen to what you have to say, but you know, um, can't please everybody. But if anybody does have any suggestions on more stuff that you like to hear. I do hear the reverberations of more Leo yes. things involved in the show. The Leo chatter um, is always up there. And I think we have found a way to be more comfortable with that. Uh, as we do have, uh, everybody has jobs and responsibilities to take care of that are first and foremost, because this is something we do for fun, but we do enjoy doing it. So uh, with that being said, I hope uh, everybody has a great Christmas to you and Pack and Sheriff, hope you all have a good Christmas. All yeah, the packets and the little deputies, hope they get everything they want. And I hope it doesn't break you. And, uh, they got me. We'll be, so uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll in the uh, first week of January. And hopefully we'll be uh, mentioning a dog's win if they're motivated. And we'll see where the college football playoffs have landed. It'll be interesting to see. There's still some stuff we haven't got to. The Exodus to the, uh, uh, shout out to Exodus, the book. <laughs> Uh, the exodus to the portal we haven't got to. Yeah. Uh, there's always stuff Everything we don't will, get to. Yeah, so the dust will be settled ben by the end so we can always go back and Ben recap. with us like we did with CNN. We never even got to the game preview. Hey, there's always not enough time. I could sit here and talk for hours, but um, yeah. Maybe yeah, somebody wants I just longer episodes. And that may be one thing, but as we've already said, we all have commitments that we had to get to. So we my, do. My wife it. was driving around on a hoverboard. Uh, kids weren't eating their spaghetti, and it was pandemonium when, when I just left. walked out. <laughs> just uh, I, I, for the first podcast. Yeah. I actually gave everybody a kiss before I left. That was thirteen big, episodes. Big ago. brain. <laughs> I had to loiter for a minute uh, with big brain. Well. Because I have job security, maybe not as a husband, but definitely <laughs> as a co-parent. I got you. That's, uh, the tornado cannot be managed by one person. No, I, I'll give her that. She is a rock star on that, as is the special agent. And uh, whenever you start procreating and people's lives are in your hands. Oh, this is the general statement. Okay. The general <laughs> statement. I live in the world of general statements. When gotcha. lives are in your hands, yeah. it gets a little difficult. Gotcha. Well, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, everybody. We will, uh, actually, sorry, one more thing. <laughs> oh, the problem will be, <laughs> we will not be back till the New Year, but do be listening out because the little sleazies will be back. Raytron and Bali will be okay. back. For Christmas, we will be putting out a bonus episode because oh, Beachside, Beachside High School was abuzz with Raytron's really? debut. So we will be putting out of that. Shout Just out. want to let everybody know, be listening out for that. Other than that, now she we're leaving. She is every bit as beautiful as you, so I can see. Don't say that about her. Why the right. young? I, I'm nothing to look at. She's very beautiful. All right. Now we're done. Merry Christmas. <laughs>